My name is uh, Michael Goldberg. I'm an assistant professor at Case Western Reserve University in the business school. Uh, I teach courses on entrepreneurship and I just finished teaching a massive open online course, a MOOC called Beyond Silicon Valley, Growing Entrepreneurship in Transitioning Economies. We had over 23,000 students from 183 countries take the course. The, the, this summit has been a great way for me to engage with practitioners from around the world. Many of them are dealing with um, youth issues around supporting entrepreneurship. Um, my MOOC, my Massive Open Online course, looks at a number of um, communities, Cleveland, my own home community being one, where over the last 10 years we've looked to support the growth of entrepreneurship. I think the reality is, is that supporting entrepreneurship around the world looks very different. Entrepreneurs have significantly different challenges. So a conference like this gives me a chance to interact with people from around the world, learn from their experiences and share my own experiences um, and hopefully better support the growth of entrepreneurship around the world. I attended a great session with um, a government official from Guinea who had a background in entrepreneurship, who talked about his own journey from an entrepreneur into government and thinking now about the challenges as a, as a government official in the role that government plays in supporting entrepreneurship. In communities outside of Silicon Valley, um, it's important for government donors in the private sector to work together around supporting entrepreneurship. In 2012, I had the opportunity as a Fulbright Scholar to um, teach in Vietnam, in Hanoi. I was asked by the government of Vietnam to teach a course. They're very interested in trying to become more like Silicon Valley. And I said, frankly, to the government officials, um, you have much more of a chance of being more like a city of Cleveland, which is where I'm from, than you do like Silicon Valley. Silicon Valley at this point is a very well-formed entrepreneurial ecosystem with private capital um, backing companies for return on investment. So I taught this course and then I designed a MOOC, a massive open online course, based on my experience in Vietnam, where teaching the experience that we went through in Cleveland, where we had no venture capital, we had no angel investing, we had no seed acceleration, and what government the private sector and the donor community did in our community to come together. Um, so that's what essentially the MOOC is about. And we had tremendous reactions. So we had 23,000 students from around the world take the class and take the lessons, not that we were preaching that our experience in Cleveland could be replicated or should be replicated in their communities, but really for them to reflect on what they could do in their own communities to grow entrepreneurship. I think to be a successful entrepreneur, you have to have a high degree of risk tolerance. It's not easy to start successful companies and you have to be willing to stick your neck out. I think for many people around the world, the safe path, like a government job, um, is the way that people have traditionally found work, supported their families, and starting a untested, um, risky business is hard for people. So I think making sure that the community not only um, has the infrastructure to support these risk takers, but also because many of them will fail when they do fail to support them in that, and then hopefully, get them back on their feet to start something else again. Nine out of 10 entrepreneurs are gonna fail at what they do. And I think the communities are the most successful are the ones that embrace that failure and get people back on their feet so they can do it again. Many people ask me questions about how the MOOC and how this Cleveland experience applies to the developing world and what lessons there are. I think clearly there are very different um, challenges that um, the developing world has from a place like Cleveland, even though we've had our economic challenges in the U.S., access to capital, access to stable broadband connections. Um, there are many more of these challenges in the developing the world than in the developed world in a place like Cleveland. I think what the Cleveland case study um, has been effective in teaching is showing people that I mean, we were ranked by Entrepreneur Magazine 61 out of 61 regions in the U.S. in terms of supporting entrepreneurship. So we really had nowhere to go but up. And this creative um, coming together of the business community, government community, and donor community, we didn't have a clear path, and we had to kind of creatively think of ways to support entrepreneurship. And I think that's really the key lesson for communities around the world, where um, even though the types of businesses may be very different, it might be an agricultural business, it might be um, you know, many, many other kinds of businesses than what we might see in the US, I think that the message that people are deriving some value out of from the MOOC experience, from the Cleveland experience is you have to do something and you have to be creative. And if you can get alignment between donors, government and the private sector to try to move things forward, you may see some progress. The other thing that's important to note is these things take decades. 
to happen. You're not going to see progress overnight. So very much in our course, we talk about how long these things take because government officials, their election cycles are short. So how does a government official think beyond the two years or four years of their election cycle? Donors get fatigued. So carrying these um, government and donors with this process over the long period of time is really hard. So I think sharing our experience in Cleveland for people around the world and how we've been going through it, I think has, has been valuable.